Cool.fm is the perfect station for music lovers who enjoy a mix of adult pop, modern country, and classic hits. Our unique blend of different genres creates an awesome listening experience that you won't find anywhere else. With Cool.fm, you don't have to constantly change stations to hear the music you love. Just download the Live 365 app and start listening to our curated selection of modern adult and country hits, as well as the classics you know and love. Tune in to Cool.fm and start enjoying the best of all your favorite music in one place. Hi, this is John Dexter, the creator and writer of Dimester Detective and Alpha Dogs, and you're watching and listening to Two Geeks Talking. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industries. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. We are joined today on this rapid-fire interview with a very talented and creative person. He has been on the show in the past, and I believe this is either his third or fourth time. We are joined by the ever-talented John Dexter, creator of Time Store Detective, of course, Alpha Dogs. How are you doing today? Good, good. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Um, hopefully, I'm, I don't want to uh, show too much of my background because I, <laughs> I, I had just seen before the interview came on that we, we could add a background, and this is actually issue four that hasn't come out yet oh. of Alpha Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> this is my background. This is well, it's fine. My homage to Spider Man. Yeah, it's the premiere, I guess, of okay. Alpha Dog issue four. Exclusive, or did this appear in other interviews? Nope, nope, nope. I just, I got it last week and I didn't want to show until, <laughs> I didn't want to show anybody until Diamonds for Detective Issue 2 came out. But, oh, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's a very, I'm very proud of it. That's I'm going to move over to the side so you can see it. And, uh, I'm very happy about it. So Yeah, it looks Maybe. great. It really does. Yeah, it does. It does. So For those that don't know anything about yourself as a creative person, tell us who you are and what you're bringing to Two Geeks Talking. Yeah, so my name is John Dexter. I'm the creator of Alpha Dogs, as you can see from the background, and my new comic, Dime Store Detective Issue 2, with Issue 1 Ketchup Tier, is funded on Kickstarter. There's only seven days left. We're down to the last week. Trying to get some exposure for that, and hopefully we can get close enough to unlocking the first stretch goal, which is uh, higher quality pages. So we're funded right now, which is great. We're doing pretty good, but hoping to get a few more backers before this is over with so we can uh, show the comic to more people, because it's a terrific comic. Uh, anybody that read Issue 1 has really enjoyed it. If you like noir, if you like supernatural stories, if you you enjoy murder mysteries, crime fiction, then you'd really enjoy Dime Store Detective. The best way to describe it is True Detective meets Stephen King's It with a really dark episode of Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> I was looking at the campaign. I love the love the video. It had a lot of a lot of action, a lot of scenes going on there as well. Too yeah. colors I'm colors good. looked amazing and you know, I'm glad that it is funded. You did touch on Dime Store Detective when we first chatted, mm -hmm. uh, our first or our second interview there. But what makes the best noir detective story, in your opinion? I would say probably a detective who, you know, doesn't play by the rules, kind of guy goes by the beat of his own drum. You know, if he's not pissing off the top brass and he's doing something wrong, you know, I, that's how I feel. He doesn't kowtow to anybody and his number one goal is trying to expose uh, the villain or the bad guy and to bring closure to a family. And to him, it's, it's not about the money or the job. It's, it's real passion for bringing justice to, to families. So that is something that I think leads me to like a noir story and it's got you know you've got your dame you know you got your woman that you're not sure whose side she's on you know she could be playing both sides uh i like that kind of story but mostly something that's original something that you haven't seen before that doesn't kind of copy somebody else that's an original story and i always have been a fan of someone that creates something that you know isn't a, a cookie cutter of something else we've seen that's why I've, i'm a a big fan of L.A. Confidential, The Maltese Falcon, and True Detective, which wasn't a movie, but was a absolutely fantastic HBO series. That, I think, what, what uh, can kind of create a memorable noir story. And, of oh. course, Snappy Dialogue. Oh, yeah. You got to have the Snappy Dialogue. Uh, Raymond Chandler, I don't know if you're familiar, you know, the Raymond Chandler dialogue that is just so snappy in the metaphors. It's, it's just good stuff. Yeah, there's a lot of really amazing shows, and there's different styles, obviously, as well, too. I, I always found that if they ever did Sherlock, like the reboot that they did with Sherlock, if they did that more noir style, I think that would be a really interesting twist on that style of character. Absolutely. That's a good idea. Well, there you go. You, 
you got your next million dollar idea, Kurt. <laughs> see if, uh, <laughs> I think that would be a good idea. See if Benedict is, is available after all the Marvel stuff, you know, just for something uh, different. I think I'm pretty sure that Sherlock Holmes is public domain now. Oh, it is, yeah, it is. Uh, I see now they've totally massacred Winnie the Pooh, so. Literally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> literally it's kind of a shame I, I i'm not a big fan i don't mind doing that but when you make it like he's a serial killer you just kind of demean the spirit of the character that that kind of rubs me the wrong way but and the funny thing is they're doing uh bambi as well as the next horror film oh gosh yeah i guess when you don't you know when you're not creative enough to come up with your own stuff just rip off somebody that's long since dead <laughs> But that's obviously not what's ha what's happening here in Dimester Detective. Talk about no, 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 <laughs> yeah. no. It's a totally original, original story. You know the, what I'm proud about with Dimester Detective. It's while well, it's got the hallmarks of the noir story, like your true detective, your right. like confidential. It definitely stands on its own two feet. And unlike any of those stories, this has a supernatural element that connects the past and the present throughout the story as we thread through. In the comic, it's about this detective, the present day, who comes upon this uh, lady that's been killed, uh, the third victim of the serial killer. She's hung in a Christ-like post over the burial grounds that the detective's father and uncle buried multiple bodies 40 years ago. And in the story, we cut back and forth to the detective when he was a child and his father and his uncle were moonshiners. And they get into this moonshine war with this rival group who is trying to run their family out of their moonshining business and becomes very violent. Connected to all this is this evil entity that gets released. And the connection to the murders that are happening now and the Moonshine War 40 years ago connects the two, not to give too much away, that is a very original story that I think readers haven't seen before. And so far, they've enjoyed the few readers that I've got so far. You know, it's, it's tough when you're an indie creator, you're doing it all by yourself. And thankfully, you and a few other podcasters and YouTube shows kind of help expose us. So I really appreciate it. Oh, well, I love having you on because I always find it amazing to see what you're creating because Alpha Dogs was, was our first connection overall there. And you, you've evolved that story and those characters as well, too. Dime Store Detective we touched on and now we're talking about here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this feels like a, a little bit of Dukes of Hazard in, in some sense. Absolutely. Just, <laughs> yeah, I want uh, Dukes of Hazard had the generally the, the car was kind of a character in itself, and he had the two Duke boys who were cousins that ran moonshine. Well, it's the same thing, and uh, only in my story, it's a '73 Barracuda with a Hemi motor, and I chose that car because my dad he was you know a muscle car fan. He grew up in that era, and so he would build them from scratch. And so I always had an affinity for the 73 Barracuda. It's a badass car, of course. So the Moonshiners ha have to have a, a souped up muscle car to outrun the cops, which is how, of course, next car was created. In my story, it's a 73 Cuda that the cousins, who people call brothers because they're so close, the two cousins run Moonshine and they're feared and respected in um, North Georgia, where the story takes place. Athens, Georgia, more correctly and we got a lot of the Appalachian Mountains involved in the mysteries and there's a whole urban legend to the Appalachian Mountains how people have disappeared over the years and that will play a, a part in the story as we find out in issue two it's definitely got that southern I wanted that southern kind of feel that country feel to it because I think you know the the Appalachian Mountains in that period of time in my story 1981 hasn't been really exposed that much you know that the the moonshine running that was done but this is much darker than it. Dukes of Hazzard so I said a very dark issue of Dukes of Hazzard because here we have the Dixie Mafia who are actually real and they some people say they still are around today created a lot of crime so part of our storytelling of today that isn't really talked about and hasn't really been exposed and so i think i'm taking something that is going to be new to readers that they haven't seen and can learn because i like stories where you kind of get exposed to something that you're not familiar with and and learn a little something i mean we, we we've done new york a billion times in stories or chicago and i think where my story setting is not something that people are are used to and and i think it's very entertaining for them switch up the scenery you know it's uh, that or you're going to end up in california or texas or something and then it's like well you know now we're at walker ranger style of a detective and everything like that so yeah i i hate i hate repetition you know i, I love reading or watching uh, something or a, a setting that is very unfamiliar um that you learn about the people you know a time period that, that hasn't really been uh, 
been really touched upon. So it, I think it's pretty cool. The the research of this here, you, obviously you had to look into the Appalachian Mountains. You had to, you know, some of the, the history of that, that location. Why, why that area in particular? Why is it, does it draw you there? Did you visit it one time and see, see something? Uh, no, well, the geography just fit for the story, you know, because I had to have the moonshine. I had to have a mountain setting for the Appalachian Mountains. Um, and I had to have the counties that were dry counties, you know, where you couldn't have alcohol. So it kind of, kind of lent itself all. And I worked in Georgia a few times. And I, and I, I do like it, except for the summer. <laughs> Stay away from the summers in Georgia. Yeah, I, I love, you know, I just think the Appalachian Mountains hasn't really been, really been in stories that much, you know. I had read the book, and I'm going to blank on it, I know. Oh, boy, A Walk in the Woods. Oh, yeah. I made a movie out of it. And it's about this guy, true story, who goes and he's going to walk the whole Appalachian Trail. And I learned a lot about the history, the, the urban legends of there, of all the murders and disappearances. And, you know, there's, there's caves in there that... Uh, some people have never even seen that are discovered even more recently. And that may uh, lend itself into my story here <laughs> um, of a certain cave. They might have some, something uh, trapped in there for many, many years. Well, I don't want you to spoil obviously your, your story <laughs> here, of course, but you know, looking at that calm conventions circuit that, that you do visit every so often here, uh, you had issue one in print already and you were selling it at conventions. Like, what was the reaction once they were looking at Alpha Dogs and, and Dime Store Detective? What were their reactions to, to uh, Dime Store Detective? Well, nine times out of ten, they pass right by Dime Store Detective and go right to Alpha Dogs. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's this big, hulking dog, this beautiful dog, and the artwork is just magnificent with Alpha Dogs. And, you know, even if you're not a dog fan, you know, everybody's got an affinity. Everybody's got a story, you know, both, most, mostly good about a dog. And, you know, they're, for the most point, innocent creatures. And so most people come, they always gravitate to, towards alpha dogs. And uh, then, but when I tell them a little bit about Dime Store, it kind of piques their interest. But there's three issues. So this year, uh, last year I only got to two conventions. I just got started. This year I've already been to three. And I've done quite well, um, actually. Um, I was very proud to say that, um, so I've been to two conventions so far this year. I sold 64 issues of my comics, which I'm, um, you know, to some, to Marvel or some big, big comic book person, that's probably peanuts. But to me, just some guy that no one knows me from Adam, uh, was able to sell 64 issues. I, I was very, very proud of that. And if anybody's in the Cadillac, Michigan area, Saturday, I have a table there that I'll be selling Alpha Dogs and I'm Street Detective. So if anybody's around Cadillac, Michigan, or even come come Saturday to their Comic Con, I'll be there. Hopefully you get a flood of people coming towards I hope so. I hope so. I don't, know, I don't know how many people will, will be at the Cadillac convention. It's not one of the bigger ones, but you never know. You know, it's funny about conventions, the few that I've been to, some of these big ones, you hardly sell any and some of the small ones you, you sell a lot. So you, you just never know. Hey, one sale is still a positive number either way. It doesn't matter what, what your total end goal is. You've made one sale. That's the start of a, of a great business there. So I love it. It is. It is. And that, that's really, that, that's kind of how you grow is going to the convention. That one-on-one -on -one connection with people, because you know, there's obviously thousands of comics out there and really what sells your comic is you, you know, in the beginning. So I'm able to do a good enough pitch that they like it so far, so far that it's paid off. They've been selling at the convention. How was this campaign say compared to your alpha dogs campaign that you did uh, earlier this year? You know, it's, it is tougher, you know, alpha dogs. I, I was able, now I have a trailer with this one. So if you, at the very least go check out the trailer for Dempster detective, I'm very proud of it. I think I'm do pretty good with, with creating while well, writing the trailers. I don't create them. I'm not that good. <laughs> Yeah, Alpha Dogs is definitely easier to sell. You know, you've got the dog. You've got this dog with uh, superpowers you can easily see. With uh, Dempster Detective, you know, it's it's not as easy because there's a lot of uh, crime stories, I guess. So people love dogs, you know I mean? That's all there is to it. And, and just on the surface, you see this dog with the glowing eyes and automatically people gravitate towards it. With Dempster Detective, it's, it's got a different feel. It's not this Superman artwork this you know, it's, it's got the demon. So the, the artwork is, is while it's really cool, you know, it's, it's not 
as easy to sell as, say, Alpha Dogs. And this is just one more step in terms of your writing journey, in terms of mm-hmm. comics there. You're, you're obviously, you're expanding your different genres. You're not sticking to one set piece like some people do with their series there. You're, yeah, I've probably, you're, probably been smarter to do that, but <laughs> I can't help it. You know, whatever whatever drives me, what my passion is, and this has been my passion for the last year is, is Dimestro Detective. I'm, I'm really, you know, I could I could have done an offshoot of Alpha Dogs. Yeah, Alpha Dogs has definitely been easier. Um, but Dimestro Detective, you know, I only had one issue in. With the Alpha Dogs, I have three issues in. So, you know, you've got to build the build the readership. And so I hopefully with uh, Dimestro Detective 2, they'll see, hey, this is building. You know, the first issue is always the toughest because you're trying to introduce these characters. You're trying to just get enough in to introduce things. You, you can't tell the whole story in one issue you gotta gotta build it and especially a noir like this there's a lot of building to it but i I believe that with issue two it's issue two is 28 pages four more pages than issue one so there's a lot more that i'm able to delve into and and get going on how many issues are you planning for dimes for detective are you just going to keep going or it's an eight issue miniseries uh all eight issues are already written i always get everything all mapped out first before i even attempt to to do it like with alpha dogs now every issue isn't written because that's going to be about 40 to 50 issues but <laughs> the first uh i think i have about nine issues written for alpha dogs written and i already know where the story goes to the end so but with them sort of detective because I, it was a mini series i wrote all the issues out first and then started the kickstarter so who's the artist then for, for the Dime Store Detective? Was it the same for everyone or did you have different artists each time? So uh, Luca was an artist for issue one and he did the present time of issue one flashbacks of 40 years ago. I wanted to have a different look to the past and the present. So I had different artists. So in the present, Luca did the coloring. And, I'm sorry, did the artwork. And then in the past, it was um, Alfredo um, from Stone Tower Studios. He did those because uh, I wanted a different look when we went back and forth. So I think it worked really well um, because they're all different people in those p- past and present. So, yeah, I think it worked well. If you missed out on Alpha Dogs issues one through three, you can get them as one of the tiers for Dime Store Detective one and two. So you can get all the comics that I've, I've written up to this point um, on the Kickstarter. I, I make it kind of give it a, a good deal. It's to their 10 a piece uh, for those for each of those issues. But yeah, you can catch up on Alpha Dogs if you missed out on it and um, both issues of Dime Store Detective. Well, John, I do hate to say it, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. I want to thank you again for coming on the show. Thanks for having me on, Kurt. I really appreciate you uh, helping me get the word out. Oh, anytime. You have such great work that I I can't not, and this is great English, I can't not support you. <laughs> thank you. I, I uh, can accept that. <laughs> I can't help but support you is what I should have said. Well, thank you. Thank you. It's much appreciated. Every little bit helps. Before I let you go, where can we find you? How can we support you? Where's the Kickstarter? Which, which, by the way, I did a tiny URL down below. Where can we find you? How can we support you? Yeah, so you can uh, just look up on a Kickstarter. Go to my social media to link or just look up on Kickstarter, Dime Store Detective or John Dexter, Instagram, alpha underscore dogs underscore comic, or on Twitter, I'm at Real Alpha Dogs. And I'm on Facebook, just type in John Dexter and I'll be at the top of it because I have a few followers. So it's uh, pretty easy. Or just go to Kickstarter and uh, check out the campaign. There's a lot of great rewards. And at the very least, check out the trailer. That's that's pretty cool. If, If the trailer doesn't get you to support the comic, I'm pretty much out of ideas. Well, like I said, that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talking. You can, of course, find this interview and a thousand plus others on our website, tgtmedia.com or twogeekstalking.com. That's the word two, not the number two. And, of course, you can find our information on our YouTube channel, which is a lot more updated than our website, which is youtube.com forward slash c forward slash tgtmedia. The podcast is back after 15 years which you can find at twogeekstalking.podbean.com or just search for Two Geeks Talking on any of your favorite audio streaming services and it'll be there. It's the only one, quite literally. And as I say every week, everyone has a story to tell. It's up to me to help bring that out. Thanks for listening and watching on Two Geeks Talking.